Gobert jump. Whoa, whoa. What is it, Gobert? <gasps> Released on November 26, 2001 in North America, Twisted Metal Small Brawl is a more kid-friendly version of Twisted Metal, toning down some of the violence and darkness of the series. While the direction is kind of odd, the gameplay is still very fun and the soundtrack is killer. This game actually released on the PS1 instead of the new PS2, and despite its less mature direction, it still received a teen rating. But without further ado, let's give Twisted Metal Small Brawl a deeper look. Twisted Metal Small Brawl feels very much like the second game. After all, they run on the same engine. Despite this, Small Brawl still feels different enough from the second game to make sure it isn't just a rehash. The turning and handling feel a lot better. The combo moves are responsive for the most part, and everything just feels better. Speaking of the controls, the player can change the control scheme in the pause menu. Or at least that's what the options say. I've changed my control scheme, and it didn't seem to do anything, so I don't know exactly what this change does. The difficulty isn't too hard. It does get real difficult sometimes, but nothing as hard as the first two games. This game also takes some things from Twisted Metal Black, such as secret unlockables. Some characters have to be unlocked through certain means, such as shooting a projectile at a certain spot, or beating the tournament mode with all the characters. The Endurance mode from Black also returns, and it's exactly the same. Keep battling against infinitely spawning enemies until the player has had enough, or dies. There's really only one new weapon in this game, the Roman Candle. And quite honestly, it's just the mini missile that does more damage and has an arc. Regardless, the weapon pull feels great. The weapons feel exactly as they should, and there's plenty of pickups scattered throughout the maps. The vehicle pull of this game also feels good. All types of builds for types of battle, and gameplay. There really isn't any new characters though. There's Mime, Piecemeal, and Trapper, but they're just vehicles that don't have a human attached. Not even all the returning characters have a human or an ending attached to them. I can kinda understand this, not all the endings were gonna fit on the PS1 disc. Still, I wish at least one of the new characters got an ending or if the new characters were given a human character to give some more personality and charm to them. Anyways, let me quickly go over the new characters. Mime. Mime is a very small toy car driven by an aspiring actress, and this is reflected in her special move, where she steals the closest enemy's special attack. Trapper. A wild child that captures opponents and is obsessed with a jungle vibe. And Piecemeal. A scavenger that takes apart the vehicles of his defeated opponents and puts them on his vehicle. There's one new multiplayer mode in this game, Free For All, where two players fight against each other and four other NPCs, and each player gets a point for every vehicle destroyed. The game ends whenever all the NPCs are destroyed, and one of the two players trashes the other's RC car. Quite honestly, I don't have a lot to say about the gameplay of this game. It's very similar to Twisted Metal 2 and didn't add too much in terms of weapons or characters. It pretty much just fine-tuned the rugged edges of the engine of the first two games, so the controls feel great, and the confidence as good as it can get. Going along with the kid-friendly vibe, the visuals of Twisted Metal have changed significantly. The game has more colors, it's vibrant, the vehicles and weapons are toys, health packs, turbo, and the special bar replaced with different types of batteries, there's no blood, and the levels mostly take place where kids would hang out, rather than places like freeways, highways, and cities. The story is similar to the other games. Calypso, as a kid, Holds a tournament and whoever wins gets their wish granted, but instead of killing people and destroying everything in sight, it's kids using their toy vehicles, and whoever has the last car standing wins. 
One small detail I always liked about this game was the flags that vehicles have. It's just like real life toy car races where people place flags on their cars so you know exactly where their car is. So let's talk about these small vehicles in the big world maps. Playground Peril, a small playground set. Use the play place in the middle to get some shelter, whether it be above or below the thing. There's also a seesaw, a tire, and a right duck to add to the playground environment, not to mention the swing set in the background. Carno Mall, an indoor haunted house that's more targeted towards kids, as shown with its juvenile nature. Use the stairs to get away from the action, get spun out with the spinning floors and cylinder, or go downstairs and access the hidden passageway for some extra health. Easy Death Oven, a rather odd kitchen as it's not really connected to the rest of the house. But regardless, use the countertops as they have weapons, but be careful, because they also contain things like the toaster oven and stove that'll burn players. Players will also notice a plumber working under the sink, blast him with napalm, and the bottom of the island will become accessible. Mini Golf Mayhem Very true to its name, rather chaotic mini golf courses make a level prime for troublemaking. It's got a wild jungle vibe. Get some air with the temple or volcano, and use the mini corners to avoid incoming missiles. Meet your maker, a terribly set up butcher room, as there's a conveyor belt that completely blocks anybody from going to the sink or using the processor. Oh, sorry, forgot this was a video game. Yet another level that has players on the ground or up on countertops. Real creative. Gridiron Gore, much like the Holland level from Twisted Metal 2, it's a big open space with nowhere to hide. There's some benches, two football helmets, and a free roaming ride on mower as the guy on top fell asleep around the map, but other than that, it's pretty barren. Treetop Rumble, a nice change of pace, the contestants cause permanent damage to their toys high in a treehouse. Since they're pretty high in the air, be careful with making those sharp turns, and while there is a trampoline in the middle of the map that'll bounce players back, the other edges of the map do not grant such forgiveness. There's also five different platforms to take a breather from all the sharp turns, with the lawnmower on one of the platforms to wreck the other vehicles. Now Slaying, a movie theater with the rows of seats acting as the only shelter between the player and their opponents. Push the popcorn trolley in the back to destroy the set in the front, and gain some weapons and extra health. Shock Therapy a wicked lab owned by a mad scientist has shown through the crazy experiments on the surrounding second level. Be careful with your curiosity, the top table has hazards that'll hurt any RC car that's not aware of their surroundings. Buster's Lanes, a really small bowling alley. Fight on the lanes or take it up to the snack bar. Players can also use the toy crane to get to even higher elevation. Check out the section under the lanes too for some goodies. Holiday Havoc. It's Christmas time in this small suburban living room. Green and red lights, presents under the tree, and the player can use the rest of the room to cause some destruction. Santa got stuck in the chimney, but shooting him won't cause anything to happen. And if you want to ruin Christmas, you can burn down the tree. While some of the masks feel repetitive in some of their aspects, like how three of them are literally just ground floor and surrounding second floor, they're pretty fun maps. And to be fair, the levels are able to distinguish themselves. Easy Death Oven's floor is pretty close quarters, Shock Therapy's is wide open, and Meet Your Maker's upper section isn't as connected as the other two levels' upper sections. Anyways, the layout of weapons and health makes sense, and the player will have to use their brains sometimes in order to save themselves or increase their arsenal. Next up, the cutscenes. The cutscenes are pretty much what you expect. A more juvenile spin on the dark endings of Twisted Metal, where Calypso often twists the words of the contestants, a la, be careful what you wish for. The CGI is pretty standard for games made for the PS1 in 2001, and fits in with the vibe of the gameplay, with more vibrance and colors to, of course, go along with the kid nature of the game. One thing I liked about these cutscenes is that they take place in a variety of locations. While most of them are at Calypso's junkyard, some take place around the suburb area. The previous games had all the endings take place in one place, Calypso's lair, or main headquarters if you will, so it's nice to see this game deviate a little bit and give more variety to the endings. The endings aren't bad for this game's direction. They're fairly clever, and are usually about 20 seconds or so long. Obviously they couldn't be dark or really go in depth in things such as real life issues or characters' motivations like previous games, but for what they're worth, 
They're pretty decent. Nothing, dirt boy. Okay, I can live with this. Twisted Metal Small Brawl has a mix of new tracks and remix tracks from the first two games. They're really good and totally fit with the aesthetic of the game. I mean, Playground Peril's song, which is a remix of Los Angeles from Twisted Metal 2, is arguably better than the original, and that's saying a lot considering the original track is one of the best songs in the entire series. One thing I noticed about the soundtrack is that it includes sound effects that would fit in with the level it's played on. Speaking of the sound effects, they aren't as impactful as previous entries, but to be fair, they had to be toned down in order to fit this game's direction. One last thing, the voice acting in the cutscenes is good, nothing spectacular, but the characters do sound like kids, and to be fair, I wasn't expecting amazing performances from a PS1 game that's aimed more at kids. Apart from the cheats in this game, which are the obligatory god mode and infinite weapons type stuff, there are a few extras I can think of that this game has. There was a cut ending pertaining to Axel. In this game, Axel is a paraplegic and asks Calypso to make him a device so he can walk. Calypso does so, but he controls the device, not Axel, so of course, he makes Axel walk all funny. This was considered offensive to paraplegics and cut from the game. Secondly, there's actually two different versions of Piecemeal and Trapper, the playable one and the boss version. Players can unlock and use these bosses, but they're smaller, weaker versions of their boss forms. Players can use the boss versions of Piecemeal and Trapper through a cheat device, and since Piecemeal is never meant to be played like this, the POV is kinda screwed. Still, it's fun to absolutely destroy the opponents as this huge unit. Finally, remember the unused concept art for Mime I showed during the new character showcase? Well, there's actually two more pieces of unused concept art for Darkseid and another contestant named Axley, who can be seen as a female version of Axel. It's unknown why the Darkseid character art was never used. As for Axley, I guess Incognito wanted to keep Axel a guy or something, I don't know. Anyways, on to the issues. Small Brawl's movement does feel pretty good, but it has one issue. Sometimes, whenever the car swears a bit too much, the controls get reversed, so pressing left goes right, and vice versa. It's not too annoying. The brake handle completely stops the vehicle and sets the controls back to normal, but this can be especially annoying when in a battle. Speaking of controls, the combo moves are more responsive than the second game, but they're still a little too strict sometimes. Next, the menus for this game aren't as cool as any of the other PS1 games. The PS1 games, with the exception of Twisted Metal 3, use still images with text overimposed over them to act as the menus and options to advance through the menus. They weren't that pretty, but added charm and had a different image for each screen. Small Brawl is just this one image for most of the menus, and some menus don't even have a background. I mean, Twisted Metal 1 and 2 gave some visual stimulation by showing which vehicles the player would be fighting in the next level to prepare them and give them something to look at, while this game just has a small image accompanied by a loading screen. It's really missing the personality of the menus. Next, the endings. Well, some of them. I think for the most part the endings are fine, I just have an irk with a few of them. The few that I have an issue with are the ones that don't really feel like Calypso is granting the character a wish. Rather, it's just the character trying to get revenge on Calypso. I understand he's a bully in this game, but the whole point of Twisted Metal is to have a wish granted by Calypso. And of course, this wish can be anything, even something supernatural. So having some endings that break from the pattern feel a bit out of place.
Twisted Metal Small Brawl has some really fun gameplay. Most of the levels are creative and nicely put together. The soundtrack is full of pumped up remixes of original Twisted Metal tracks and some new adrenaline pumping songs. And the visuals aren't bad for a late PS1 game. It's kind of weird Twisted Metal decided to go with this direction. I mean, a game where kids enter a tournament and fight each other with their toy cars sounds like a decent idea, but considering Twisted Metal's reputation as a game that's on the darker and mature side of things, it feels a bit out of place. Despite this, the execution isn't half bad. It takes the edge of the franchise and tones down some of the other things like the violence and darker endings, so it feels like a kid-friendly Twisted Metal and not like a completely different series. Let's count out everything this game has to offer. 16 playable RC cars that have a good amount of detail on them for a PS1 game. 11 levels that are varied for the most part, but some are a bit repetitive. A soundtrack that consists mainly of remixes and re-recordings of old Twisted Metal tracks, but still has its uniqueness and it kicks ass. Endings that don't feel too off from the vibes of Twisted Metal. An odd direction that was executed decently, it still feels like Twisted Metal. A new two-player mode, along with the returning co-op and competitive game modes. Endurance mode, which was borrowed from Twisted Metal Black. A good amount of unlockable characters and levels. And an engine that feels very similar to Twisted Metal 2's with a lot of polish. Small Brawl is a little odd for the series, but it's fun, has unlockables, a good soundtrack, and good visuals for the PS1. And until next time, let's cause some mayhem. But don't get too violent. We're aiming at a younger audience here.